Okay, I remember my first time opening Pro Tools and how confusing and intimidating and just annoying it was and not user-friendly at all. And I just wanted to quit and go back to my other DAW, but I knew figuring out Pro Tools was gonna be really important for my career. So I just wish that I would have had some sort of guidelines, some sort of program, something that, I, that would have helped me get through the first terrifying steps of opening Pro Tools. So these are my five roadblocks that I hit. So the first five things I wish I would have known when I opened Pro Tools. Uh, if you're curious, let's dive in. So the first thing we're gonna do is just literally open Pro Tools. The first thing that pops up is your dashboard. The first thing in the dashboard is the name. So this is the name of the session. I like to name my sessions numerically, followed by the task that I'm doing. So whether it's prep, tracking, um, editing, printing stems, whatever, and then I follow that by the song title. So for example, today would just be 01 Prep Pro Tools Tutorial. Underneath that, we've got local storage. That's just for literally saving it on a local hard drive, uh, not the cloud. After that, you've got the template. Uh, you can create from the Pro Tools template, but for me, that was a little bit more confusing, opening it up and it had all of these tracks. I didn't know what any of it was. Eventually, you can open a Pro Tools template, you can customize it, make it your own, or you can literally create your own template and start saving it in a database and then using it there to increase your workflow. Uh, but for today, we're gonna open with no template and start from scratch. Below that, in this little quadrant down here, we've got file type. This just means the types of files it's going to create when you hit record, like the actual audio files. You can choose between WAV or AIFF. Uh, for me, I personally choose WAV, but do whatever you want. The sample rate uh, just refers to the number of samples that are captured each second of a waveform that creates the digital signal. So the higher number of samples, the more detailed that waveform will be in its digital version. This, of course, increases the file size of each waveform created. So keep that in mind when you're selecting your sample rate, uh, because the higher the sample rate, the higher the storage you're going to need or the more storage you're going to need. And then once you've chosen your sample rate and you start the session, just note that you can't change it afterwards. Um, you're locked into that sample rate. Uh, then you've got bit depth, and this just refers to the number of amplitude values that can be recorded for each sample. So in this very unscientific way explained by me, it just means the higher the bit depth, the higher the resolution. Uh, somebody else somewhere can explain it way better, but that's my understanding. So the higher the bit depth, the better, because you're gonna have more room for amplitude values. Uh, the last thing is IO settings. Uh, we're gonna explain that a little bit later in the video, uh, but for right now, just click Stereo Mix. Below that is Interleaved and this checkbox. So if you have two mono channels that are panned left and right named, as sim named the same thing, it's going to export that as a stereo file. Um, if you wanna keep it as a stereo file, click interleaved. If you want it to be exported as two mono channels, then leave that unchecked. Now below that is location, and that's just gonna be for file management. It's just where you're going to save the project on your hard drive. File management is so important for organization. Doesn't matter how you wanna organize it, just have a system that you stick to. For me, I organize everything by artist name, so I can go through, search the artist, and then after that I have my numerical order of song titles, Whichever way you wanna do it, if you wanna do it by date or literally just by song or whatever, it doesn't matter, but I just recommend that you choose something and stick to it. All right, now that we've got a firm grasp on the dashboard, let's create this session. Okay, so now we've got Pro Tools open. We've got this blank session. The second thing I wish I would've known when I first opened Pro Tools was how to connect it to my interface. That it would be really easy. After knowing what it is, it's of course easy, but I just could not figure it out for the life of me. So with that being said, to get it connected to your interface, you're gonna get a setup, playback engine, and then you're gonna choose what you want Pro Tools to recognize as your playback engine. Right now it's connected to the TV, but my playback engine is the Aurora 16. So underneath your playback engine is your buffer size. Um, the lower the buffer size, the less latency you're gonna have. The higher the buffer size, the more latency you're gonna have. 
when you're tracking, you want low latency, uh, but just be careful running a bunch of plugins because depending on like your CPU power or whatever, it may crash or stall out or whatever. So just try and use minimal pl plugins while you're tracking, and then you can start layering them in once you have the space to increase your buffer size. Below that is your video engine. So if you're doing any sort of video editing and you need to import a video file, you'll want to have that on. Below that are optimizations. The optimizations tab is helpful as you can customize how you want Pro Tools to function during recording playback. So, so the first thing, ignoring errors during playback recording are useful for software instruments, but not necessarily for audio instruments uh, because pops and clicks might be baked into the recording and you may not realize it until the recording is finished. Uh, so I would recommend uh, having that off. Below that is the aux IO. So that's useful if you're using multiple interfaces or like virtual sound sources that need uh, inputs or outputs for Pro Tools. After that, uh, dynamic processing, that just saves your CPU by telling plugins to only function while it's processing audio. And then optimizing performance at low buffer, buffer sizes is not something I fully understand, but know that it's helpful for me when recording at a low buffer size to reduce latency with improved performance. Uh, the last item here is your cache size. So this is dependent on the RAM installed on your machine. I have 16 gigabytes of RAM, therefore the max cache size available here is 12 gigabytes. I have it set high because I'm generally running a higher amount of tracks with a decent amount of plugins. Uh, but for a vocal and guitar, I could easily get away with you know a lower cache size. So now that we've got that figured out, let's create our first audio track. So to create an audio track, the shortcut is shift command N, or you can go to track and new. All right, so this is since this is our first time here, I'm just gonna walk you through this. You have the option of creating a track that's in mono, stereo, LCR, all of these different options. Um, you can go into Atmos specs. Uh, I would assume if you're watching this video, you're not about to start mixing a full project in immersive Dolby, Dolby Atmos. So we'll just stick to a mono track. After that, you can select what type of track you want it to be. So it can be an audio track, it can be an aux input, it can be a MIDI track, an instrument track. An instrument track is where you're gonna get all of your virtual instruments. We're just gonna do this in samples and then you can name your track. So we can just call this um, input or just track vocal. Let's do vocal. Um, so create. Okay, so we're almost ready to pass signal, but of course it can't be that easy. Um, what we need to do now is tell Pro Tools where we want to receive the audio and then where to spit it out. So I'm calling this step routing. If your track looks like this, you can see you've got a record button, you've got an input monitoring button, a solo button, a mute button. Let's not worry about any of this stuff. Uh, we can save that for a later video. Um, so in order to hear this, we're gonna need to expand what we can see on this lane. So we're gonna go right up here to this little tab and we're going to click IO. And then this is our input section and our output section. So depending on your interface, you may have a one channel interface, you may have a four, eight, 16, 32 channel interface. However you're doing it, that'll all show up here under your IO. Um, your inputs are on top, your outputs are on the bottom. You can just select this. I have a lot of mine already pre-labeled um, for what I do. That's our input. Here's our output. I just do a stereo out. If you're not seeing your inputs or outputs, you may need to reset your IO. So in order to do that, you'll go to setup, you'll go to IO, and then you'll go to inputs and you'll just click default and that'll default to your interface's default settings. Output, you'll do the same. Default to your interface's default settings. Uh, now that you're seeing signal from your interface, uh, we're ready to record. But wait, of course, I can't hear the metronome and it's at the wrong tempo. So let's go ahead and quickly fix that. Um, and then we'll be on our way to recording the song. So to do this, you'll need to go to track and then create click track. So essentially what this has done is created an aux return track. So if you remember when we uh, created an audio track here, it just created an aux input and then it put the metronome plugin on it. But right now I can't see that plugin, so we need to go back to this little tab, open up inserts, and then there is the plugin called Click. Uh, so from there, you can open it, you can mess with all the sounds, the meter, the uh, subdivision, 
whatever. Um, as you can see, the BPM is 120, but I don't want it at 120. So in order to change the whole session's tempo, we're gonna have to go to this little red diamond right up here. We're gonna double click it, and then we're gonna enter in the tempo that we want. Uh, let's say we don't know the BPM. You can just go to the letter T on your keyboard and tap tempo. And then there you go. So for five quick moves, this was a long ass video uh, to get started in Pro Tools, but hopefully this gives you some confidence when you open it up for the first time and begin creating. Um, comment below if I missed something crucial in this startup guide or just comment what you wanna see in the next video. And so see you then.